Hi guys, this is Momentum Unveiled and I am Jennifer Iferenta. On the show today, we have the honor of having um, a man who so far has made Nigeria so, so proud, uh, Eden the Super Eagles, yes. I know so many of you are already making your guesses and trying to find out who could that be. Okay, right after this break, we'll be going straight to business. Don't go nowhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Our guest in the house, is no other person than the head of Super Eagles himself, the able coach. Uh, I won't pronounce his name, but I'll give it to him to pronounce himself the way you should pronounce it because a lot of us have been mispronouncing it and saying it different ways. So, sir, give it to you. What's your name, sir? It's not easy to pronounce for you, I know, yes. but it's uh, for a German. Gernot? For a German, it's simple. Gernot. Okay. Rohr. Roy. 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 Letting me go, are you saying something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the Super Eagles coach with us. And you know what we're going to be doing now? We're going to ask you a few questions, trying to get to know you, let uh, your fans out there, let the Nigerian football lovers get to find out more about the coach. Okay. So we'll be starting with one question. Like, we have been with uh, the Super Eagles since 2016, and uh, you've taken us to World Cup, and you just qualified us for the AFCON uh, match. So tell us. What has been the challenges so far over the years uh, being the national coach of Nigeria? The challenge is to have the results, to win the matches. The first, the big challenge was to rebuild a new team with young players and to go to the World Cup. And uh, this was not easy because they had a tough group with uh, Algeria, with Zambia, with Cameroon. And uh, we did it without losing a game. So that was the first big challenge. Second one was to, to do well in the World Cup. This was also uh, not easy because we had a very tough group. This Croatia was a finalist of the tournament. We had the Iceland and Argentina with Messi. So, uh, but we had the youngest team in the world, which means that uh, they did really very well and a wonderful victory against Iceland. And now the second challenge was to qualify for the AFCON because since uh, two AFCON editions, Nigeria, we are not present and we wanted to do that and we did it. We had much to spare so now we prepare the AFCON that will be the next challenge to do a good AFCON. Hmm. We are so happy that we are actually qualified for the AFCON. It was I, love, I watched the last match and it was like amazing. You're doing a good job. For me, I think it's in a good job. I don't know what other people think, but for me... The, the, the most difficult match was uh, in South Africa, of course. And uh, so we did what we had to do. We scored a goal. They scored also. We scored two other goals. The referee said offside, but was not offside. And, uh, but the draw was enough to be qualified. And uh, so we have now these two last games against Seychelles and Egypt for the preparation for the next upcoming. Okay, Nigerians, we are in the AFCON. Now tell us, as we prepare for the AFCON, as the AFCON uh, tournament moves closer, what will you say are the preparations that are around to make sure we bring back the Caribbean trophy? Yes, now we will have the, the draw on the 12th of April. In a few days, we will see uh, which teams are playing with us in our group. You know that now the AFCON will be with 24 teams, it's the first time, before it was only 16, so all the big countries are there. It will be more difficult to win it than in the past. We have uh, to go out of the group, so to finish in the first two places in the, in the group. Then we have to go in the round of last 16, the, the quarter-final, the semi-final and I hope the final. The challenge is to go so far as possible and uh, we are not in the first pot. In the first part, there are six countries like Egypt, Mali, Guinea, Senegal, but we are not there. They suppose that we are not in the six best countries, but we want to show them to the people wow. of CAF that we are able to go in the last four. Okay. I, I, I actually believe that something could be done about that. Uh, no, 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 that they have that because we didn't participate uh, before I was coming. Nigeria was not uh, participating in the last two AFCONs. So they do, I think, uh, something about the last results in the AFCON. We are number four in Africa. When I arrived, we were number seven or eight. Now we are in the best four. 
even in the FIFA ranking, we are going high now. This is very important for the next World Cup qualifiers because when you are high in the FIFA ranking, you have better chances to play with uh, teams who are not so strong. Oh, nice. Um, there's this question that everybody has on their mind and wanting to be answered. Like, we all know that Mikael Bill is the uh, captain of Super Eagles and he has somehow been omitted from playing, he has not been seen playing um, during the last half qualifying matches. So, is it that he was omitted or what really happened? No, he has not been omitted. He, he was not ready. He asked me. He wasn't uh, ready? He was not ready. He was injured at first. He had a knee injury and he was not ready to come. So there was this injury and then uh, he got a new club in Middlesbrough in uh, only I think in February. So he started again to play. And uh, but still the knee is not so very good and uh, he's not ready. When I asked him if he's ready to come, he said, no coach, please, not yet. So we are waiting uh, what is, is coming now and uh, he must be very, very fit at first. He has so many games with Middlesbrough to play now in the Premiership in England. They want to play the playoffs in the end of the season to come up in the, in the first league. So it will not be easy for him to play everywhere. That's why for the moment it's not with us. Oh. So is it, are we looking forward to the same plane for the AFCOM match proper? Yes, for the preparation. We will see what's happening. Uh, we will start in the first days of June. You know that everybody finishes this championship in a club. Okay. So they are finishing end of May. They will have eight or ten days of holidays, of rest. Okay. And then we will start in the very first days of June. It's a camping. I want to do it in Nigeria where we have good conditions, we have very, very good conditions in Uyo. It's a wonderful place. So in Nigeria, we have good, good conditions for camping? In Uyo. Just in, in Uyo? Now we have also Asapa, but uh, it's not the same level like in Uyo. In Uyo, we have the international level with good pitches, with two training pitches. And uh, in Asapa, we have now a stadium. And thanks to the governor, he's doing very well. He we wants to give up the governor of uh, Delta State. He's offering uh, the last uh, 12 days to Nigerian football team and we could have a good uh, preparation for Seychelles and for Egypt. But they still have to work on the, on the infrastructures, the hotel and the, the, the training speech, for example, but they're working on it. What I regret is in such a country like Nigeria, we don't have anything to go in Lagos. We cannot play in Abuja in the national stadium because there is no grass. Really? No grass, eh? No grass. <laughs> no. Okay. The question I was asking was actually, um, then before we got into this, was the coming upcoming um, match, the, political, uh, the competition that is coming up now, are we going to have Mikel Obi playing for Nigeria? Mikel Obi, I give you the answer now. I, 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 no, you know, I spoke play. two minutes about, yeah, <laughs> about no, you that. Yeah, you said, no, no, I'm like, <laughs> when you spoke about the qualifying match. Now, you know, now the match itself is yeah, coming. We out. have to wait now. If he's ready, he has a chance to come. But the team did very well without him also, you know, without him, without Victor Moses. Uh, since the World Cup, we made eight games. We won six. We made two draws. So uh, everybody who wants to come in must show his fitness and his uh, very good performances in the club and then we can speak about it okay so guys let's go for a short break and we'll continue so as afcon is fast approaching uh, do you think you and your team has all it takes to win the tournament not yet i think we have still a lot of work to do we have to improve in all the departments in the team we have to work on our goalkeeper department, our defensive line, in the midfield also we must find more complicity. We have such good countries in, in this AFCON. All the big countries are there and uh, if you want to win it, you must be very, very, very strong. In the last two games we tried to find a new striker, for example, with this is Paul Onuachu who scored a nice goal. So this will bring more competition in the attack department. 
But now we have still to work on the harmony in the team, on the complicity, our strategies. And uh, I think we have a little chance to win the AFCON, but we are humble. We cannot say we have to win this AFCON. We didn't even participate in the last two editions. We cannot come here and say we must win the AFCON. No, this is a pressure from a young team, which I don't like. Oh. So you don't want the team to be under pressure from Nigeria. You want Nigeria to like let them do their thing. And let it feel Everybody good. wants to win, but uh, don't, don't tell them you must win. You must no. You have a chance to win. You must work very hard. You must be very strong. Twenty-four countries are here. Everybody wants to win it. <laughs> so, do we have the best players? I don't have uh, uh, money. I don't have Sadio Mane. I don't have uh, Mohamed Salah. I don't have these other big players from uh, Premier League. We don't have any player who's playing in Champions League in Europe. We only yeah, have we only have one one player or two who are playing sometimes in Europa League. It's this is uh, Alex Iwobi and Chukweze from Villarreal. It's the only one in big teams we have. But uh, you know, our strength is the team spirit, is the teamwork. It's a fighting spirit, sometimes our strategy, but we don't have, I think so, the biggest players in the world. Hmm. Okay, uh, what can you say the NFF can do? In what aspects can the NFF improve to help you work better, to help the players do better? Yes, uh, they, they know already. Yeah? I wrote uh, my, my report, I wrote my, my program. I'm waiting now for the, the answers. Everybody has to do his job. It's starting already with there must not be any issues. Uh, there must not be any problems with the staff or with the players. Everybody must be focused on this tournament. And then I hope that we will have a good preparation with the camping, that we will all the time have what we need, the balls already, the good pitches, the good traveling to go there, the good camping. And then uh, the equipment all, all must be really uh, professional work. And then, if all is okay, they can ask us to deliver. But everybody must be 100% in the respect of the football and of everybody. Um, tell us, what are those three things you will, you will tell your players that are currently on the national team not to do as the tournament was closer? Yeah. Now, what I tell them not to do is, at first, to be injured. If there is an injury now, they can miss the tournament. Okay. Second thing I want them to do is to stay humble, not to be arrogant, not to have a too big confidence. We have still to work. It's not because we won our game since the, the World Cup, since nine months. We are unbeaten that now they believe we are the greatest. No, we still have to stay uh, humble. There is another thing that I want that they are aware that is now also to finish well, of course, in the in the club, to avoid to have prob problems with the agents, with the transfers, with that can perturb sometimes the players, can disturb. So uh, to be really focused, to clean all the contract uh, questions they can have with the clubs and with the agents and to come with a free mind in our preparation. Hmm. Nice. Okay, this is for the player, young players out there that are looking forward to one day probably doing the Super Eagles, doing the national team or getting the chance to work with you or something. I uh, want to ask you, for players that are relatively unknown, relatively unknown, what is that thing you look out for to give them a chance? So when you are unknown, uh, you have to, to be a good player in your club that uh, you will be known. And if it's a local player, he has to, to be in the Chan team. You know, the Chan team is the Super Eagles, but only with local players. Okay. It's not my team. This is uh, the team actually from my assistant, Imama. If they are young players, they have to go to the under 17. If they are 19, they have to go to the under 20, they are playing the World Cup in May. I will be there, like I watched the Afcon of under 20 in Niger, and I took two best ones. 
give them a chance in my last list. That's what they have to do. They have to play well in the club and then to go in the selection under 17, under 20, under 23, Chan is the local players and only the best one have the chance to come in the Super Eagles A team. Hmm. Okay, what are your plans for like, the home base players? Yes, like I told you now, I have to go in the Cham team. The What's best the home based players can come in the Cham team. This is a national team of Nigeria composed by only the local players. So, and then I watch if there is somebody very good. I took for the last 23 list, I took four home-based players. Wow, so we have new The goalkeeper is Enva, who played very well against Eji. Wow. He's a local player. Valentine from Enyemba is a local player. I saw him yesterday again, but he was on the bench. He didn't play in Enyemba against MSN. Then we had Efiong from Aqua United, who made his first match in Super Egypt. And then we had Udo from Enyemba also who playing under 20, was the captain of the under 20 team. So they have their chance, but really they have to do well in the club and in the under 20 to come back with the Super Eagles because the players who are in Europe, they have so good conditions to work and so such a high level uh, they are playing in the clubs, in the Premier League, in France, in Germany, in the Premiership. So it's very difficult for the local players to have the same level. Tell us, what is your relationship like with the current NFF chairman? Yes, we have a, a professional relationship. Uh, I thank Mr. Pinnick to give me the confidence to come here and to be the coach of the Super Eagles. Now we are preparing together the next challenges and I hope we can do it in a very, very professional kind of work. And uh, we are all now in the obligation to have the results. What I'm asking to our people is to be correct with everybody and to have a very good relationship also with the sports ministry. You know, if you want really to go far, the government and the NFF, they have to work together and uh, then there will be a harmony which will be very good for the Super Eagles. Oh, <laughs> so we have harmony between yourself and the uh, chairman. Of we try, we try. <laughs> it's nice, you need Amoni to work well. So right now, it's been nice asking the coach, Gennot Roy, all these questions. I'm sure a lot of you have learned a lot, and now you all know what to expect as the AFCON draws closing. Yeah. Um, just before we go, we need the coach to give us the top five moments of this match so far. We will be doing that just after the break. Welcome back guys. Like I said before the break, it's about time for us to find out the top five moments of Gerard Noor, the Nigeria Super Eagles coach, his life so far. And the countdown from number five, let's yeah. have it. Yeah, so oh, it's easy. It's very easy to answer. Yeah. Because uh, the first moment was in my life was great was Emmanuel, my first son. The second one was Oscar, my second son. The mm. third one was Elisa, my little daughter. When you had all of them, right? The fourth one, number four, <laughs> is Johan, the last one, six years old now. And the fifth big moment was the World Cup in Nigeria. Okay, that has been it with the coach, Gennot Roy, the Super Eagles coach, giving it to us everything we need to find out about himself, the Afcon match, the World Cup, his relationship with the NFF, the Miguel OBS issue, and many more. Also, he gave us his top five moments. With that, it's going to be a wrap on Moments on Build. Before I go, make sure you follow us on our social media and do at WTV.ng, and you can also follow me at Jennifer, the parent. So, I see you next time. Don't find Wahala because we'll find trouble. And this is trouble. <laughs>